been a yoga instructor for how long? About seven years now. Practicing 15, teaching seven. And what's the particular type of yoga that you practice? Ashtanga. Ashtanga yoga. And tell us what's special about that type. Well, it's a, uh, well, it, it claims to be a 1,500-year-old practice derived from the Kuranta Sutra, which was found, as the legend goes, uh, at the University of Calcutta in 1932. And it was found by a couple of Sanskrit scholar yogis. And it was given to Patavi Joyce, who uh, went ahead and popularized it and has been teaching it for many, many years. He's now 90 years old. And it consists of 72 poses, the primary series. There are four series, but the primary series and the second series that I practice and teach, the primary series consists of 72 poses, and they're always done in the same sequence. It's a very orthodox and traditional style of yoga. Uh -huh. It's very much Indian style of yoga. It's not American, um, not that one's any better than the other, but there are many derivatives from this type of yoga. Anyway, it means eight limbs. And the third of the eight limbs, and this is derived from Patanjali's sutras, don't want to get too esoteric here, but yeah. um, the eight limbs, ashta in Sanskrit is eight, anga is limbs, so there are eight limbs to this style of yoga. The third is pran, um, asana, which means postures, and the rest, the fourth is the correct breathing, and the fifth is the correct concentration, and then there's the uh, meditative aspect, dahyana, which is the seventh, and the eighth is samadhi, where it all comes together. Again, I, I would rather not get too into it. Well, apparently, when you started taking yoga several years ago, you loved it so much that you decided that you wanted to teach it to other people, spread the joy, so to speak. I realized I enjoyed, yeah, after many years of, te of practicing, um, a friend of my wife's asked me if I would teach her, and then I was affiliated with the Albuquerque Zen Center, and some of the students there asked me if I would teach, so we used that facility to teach it, and, uh, and for the first year I just taught just to get my voice, and then began taking teacher training courses and studied with Patavi Joyce and some of the major Ashtanga figures in the world and, you know, felt I was ready and began to teach. So, as you know, we're teaching here at the Albuquerque Gym. Yes, which, Annette runs, thank you very much, and the classes are full. They are, they are. And these were people, employees, that were runners, weightlifters, um, and they did it every day, and then we introduced yoga to our program, and they're no longer jogging, weightlifting, <coughs> they're in Jimmy's class. So, you know, I mean, and they still look great. So it's not like they've given up their fit lifestyle, if anything. Um, they feel better, um, no more impacting or uh, carrying muscles or you know, having to give a break on back because they're running on hard, hard pavement when they go running. Now it's just Jimmy's class, so they really enjoy it. So as a trainer, you really like to recommend yoga to people because it's, it's better for your body, you think, or not as hard on your joints? Well, it, it definitely isn't as hard on, on the body as, say, if you were, you know, in, in a weightlifting class or even out mm -hmm. running. Mm -hmm. um, myself, who... That's what I do. I'm out on, I'm on the treadmills, on the ellipticals. But there's days when it's like, I need yoga. Um, I need to get in there and just work the body in a whole different way. Um, I was uh, doing a stair routine where my muscles became so sore in my calves that I, I literally was shuffling in. and I, I remember that day. Yeah, do you remember that yeah. day? And then I decided, you know what, today I'm doing yoga, and it just relieved the soreness like you wouldn't believe. It was just incredible after I, I finished his class. But some people, if they just want to do yoga, that's all they need to do. That's all they need to do. Mm -hmm. And I mean, Jimmy can attest yeah, to that. Yeah, tell us about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are different forms of yoga, so there are restorative forms which are not quite as vigorous, not quite as cardiovascular or weight-bearing or intensifying. But then there are the more traditional styles, like the orthodox styles, like Ashtanga, like Bikram Yoga, that is an all-inclusive workout. So you're going from the stem of the brain to the roots of the toes, your muscles, sure. internal organs, everything is toned and stretched and, and you know, built. It is quite weight-bearing and quite cardiovascular. People are surprised, you know. People come up and say, mm -hmm. well, I've been you know, for years, and then let's try this. And then when they try this Ashtanga system, 
Sometimes they don't come back. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you have to start off easy. Yeah. You do, regardless of your physical fitness. And, you know, of course, someone who's physically fit. And we don't mean you, know, uh, you have to be flexible. There's a misconception out there that yoga, you, you hear people say, well, I, I'm not flexible enough, so mm -hmm. I can't do yoga. I was going to ask you. Yeah, that's, in, that's just like insane when you hear that because, one, it's not about flexibility. It's about poise and alignment and attention. It's a mental discipline first. It's not calisthenics. It's not contortionism. There is a difference. Then you work on, once you get this down, then you work on the flexibility. The flexibility is a byproduct of yoga. You do become flexible. The joints do stretch. But there's a saying in yoga, blessed are the stiff ones, because they immediately <laughs> feel the, the uh, <laughs> they immediately feel the, the effect of the posture. Mm -hmm. So if you can go deep into a pose and you're looking around and thinking about something else and you're concentrating, manifesting the posture as an object of meditation, and that's a long story, but then it's, then it's calisthenics. But if you can only get halfway there, but you're gazing and breathing properly, mm -hmm. concentrating, and your body's getting the same effect of someone who can get all the way and is not paying attention, then you're doing yoga. And that person is doing some form of calisthenics. And the only difference between someone who can get deep, deep into a pose and uh, two people who can get deep into the pose and one is looking around I mean, is that one is it's taking, or one who cannot get to it, let me start over. Someone can get very deep into a posture and is gazing and doing it correctly, and someone who cannot get as deep into a posture, and they are gazing and correctly breathing. There's a difference between them, and the only difference is that it takes the person who can go deeper longer to get into the posture. So it's not about judgment. It's not about a perfect pose. Another saying is, there's no such thing as a perfect pose. You know, it's just... You go as deep as your body will let you. So there's a real mind-body connection. Exactly. Well, that's what it, that's very good. That's the word yoga. That's where it, it is derived from the root word in Sanskrit, uji, which means union, yoke, connect, yoga. Connecting. And it's not so much connecting the body to the mind. Well, the phrase goes, connecting the body to the mind to the vehicle of the breath. But actually, it's, it's waking up to the fact that you're already connected. You see, huh. we lose it through yeah, the really. discursive ego, the, <laughs> what they call yoga yeah. vritti chitta narodaha. Yoga is the cessation of the fluctuations of the mind. So it's this discursive thinking that takes us out of the present that causes us a lot of trouble. And with yoga, we a bring it together. A lot of trouble. Can trouble. you say stress reaction? Stress. <laughs> that's the but problem. I don't know what it means. Well, that's what kids. people get into. That's the trouble they get into. They have stress reactions because they believe the now. Because once you're fully in the now, you know that you can cope with anything. It's when we leave the now that we feel start to feel overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And so it, another advantage of yoga, I know, is that even when you're not in a pose or you're not in class or you're not actively practicing, when you're at home sitting in a chair, you can feel the benefits just sitting there in the chair. That's true. Well, with maturity in the practice, you do. It, it, that's why, I mean, that's why people, it's like around 15, this particular... I mean, yoga goes back over 3,000 years in certain forms, but you, you, it's amazing. You know, you begin to be able to plug in. You just mm -hmm. plug in to, uh -huh. do you say the here and now? I don't want to sound too metaphysical, but it is, there is something going on here that does, you know, people come back to class, and in my own experience, you know, there's something that draws you back. There's an intuitive connection. You know, why it felt, you know it felt good, but there was something else going on. I want to go back there, and then you start taking practice, and, and, you know, there are different styles of yoga being taught. It was very fortunate now, because when I first came here, and 10 years ago, the only, I would take Ashtanga classes, and I still take classes, but they're hard to find Ashtanga teachers, but I'd have to travel to Santa Fe, to T.S. Little's studio. He was teaching classes then, every morning. So what if somebody wants you to be their teacher? Why? Well, well, who? Me? me? No, what if somebody watching the show wants you to be their teacher? What would they do? Call Contact your... me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get a number up there. Yeah. Let's get a number up there. What is it? What's what? your phone number? 884-3616. Yeah, I just want people to know that if you're feeling inspired, this man can teach you a shtanga. Well, I'm yoga. also teaching 10 classes throughout the city, so that's always available to them. And, and also, don't it. you have a, a website? Well, I have an email address. An email yeah, address. I can send my schedule. Yoga at home. Yoga at home, spelled. Yoga I know, it's so email. easy to remember. At at yahoo.com yahoo.com you'll get home at it that's Yahoo. such a great I, i'll never forget that it's so easy to remember. <laughs> well you know what was uh when we first introduced yoga to you know obviously this is the the law enforcement facility the law enforcement gym so there's a lot of law enforcement offices 
got a few of them to try yeah. it, you know, but of course, you know, they because of schedules, it's hard to maintain a, a schedule. They come in and work out whenever they can. Um, but th some of them are still practicing. Some of these big officers who were in there weightlifting all the time, I'll see them practicing the, the beginning series Just, or yeah, the sun, salutation. sun, sun salutations. And instead of warming up in the regular way, yeah. they're doing How about that? salutation. So yeah. it's really it's really a neat thing to see. The class is going on now six, oh, maybe approaching six years. So it's mm -hmm. been quite successful. Yeah. Yeah. Very. I want to thank packed. Annette for the organization and the, the heating and playing <laughs> off the people in the gym against the people in the yoga class. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so we it's do. really a balancing act. It Thank is, you. It is. <laughs> <laughs> we do have that, that side still going. It's <laughs> like, you know, are you going to go to the other side? <laughs> and, um, you know, I always encourage them to try it. I mean, it, if you've been exercising a certain way the whole time, um, try give yoga a try. I mean, I've had people with back problems, people that have been told they're hypertensive. Um, you know, be careful how you exercise. Well, you can pretty much go into yoga with, um, you know, with those type of problems and mm -hmm. feel so much better, improve their quality of life, improve their health. And it's not like you have to have a gym with equipment to be in yoga. And, and that's the, the beauty of it, too, because some people, time is always the number one excuse why they can't exercise. Mm -hmm. I like the same class, you don't, all you need is a 4 by 8 space. So you could be in a Tijuana jail cell or the, <laughs> or the Hyatt penthouse and you can get a complete yogic workout. You think you ran 12 miles and you don't even step off the mat. It's amazing stuff. It's, you know, and it's, again, it's the way it's put together <clears throat> in all of its form. I mean, the other systems as well, but uh, of course I'm particular to, to Ashtanga. So and yeah. you're going to visit with the famous guru who's 90 years old in India for a month? Yeah, for a study in uh, in a month in December, uh, Pat Patabi Joyce. I have a, I have a, Did you bring see, his can picture? I, I have a visual here. Yeah, I'd wow. like to see him. It's amazing. So he's 90 years old and still doing yoga. Uh, no, really he's, no, he's not doing it. He's, I mean, he's doing his practice, his seated meditative practice, but he's not doing asana practice that I know of. Um, he's interesting. What There's did a you picture of him in... Okay, what did you just say? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have to remember, James, you have a language all your own. Uh, this is sad. Well, we, we, in, when we study Ashtanga Yoga, we're, we're taught to teach God, it. God, he looks good for 90. Yeah. Is he really 90 in this Which picture? Which one are you looking at? No. Oh. <laughs> here, check this out. How old was he here? Uh, 20, 19, 20 years old when he began studying with uh, Krishna Machara, his is, teacher. Is this a more That's recent? That's him at, at oh. 90 there sitting... I went to study with him last month in San Diego, and that's him on, on the right. <laughs> that's on his grandson right. on the left, who's now teaching as well. And they run the uh, Mysore Institute of Ashtanga Yoga in India, Mysore, oh, India. What a great picture. Good one. So are you going to, like, live with him or what? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll be, I'll be attending classes at the ashram, at the, at the yoga studio. And, in uh, India. In, yeah, and it's, it's quite intense. I mean, he's... A, he looks like a kind, here he is, uh, his, his book. This, I think, was first published in 54. These are the poses in the sequence. It's from the Kuranta Sutra that we mentioned. Uh -huh. That was given to him. Um, so, yeah, it's a study. Of, you, you send a letter, and you tell them who you studied with, and they decide whether or not, you know, you can come. And, of course, I studied with him, so I, that was a help. You qualify. And I'm, yeah, and I'm going. And I've studied with also some of his better, his uh, international teachers, so... I'm going uh, first time to India. So you're like world known. Yeah. Well, I will be, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. There'll be, you know, 30 people there, I'm sure. So we're lucky to have Jimmy. No, no kidding. Kidding. He's a superstar. Oh, uh, no, no, no. In the yoga world. <laughs> no, no, there's no such thing. <laughs> Tell me about, I know that, I know what, just from exercising that sometimes I, I can feel really, well, and I've done yoga too, and, um, it's a very spiritual experience, whether I'm on the treadmill or I'm, you know, doing a pose. Um, I've never been in your class, but, you know, it just might I happen. I you had. Didn't days. you go to an introduction? Every year we do the, the introductions. You may I have. I think you might have. I don't know, but I need to go back. Yeah. My, my knees are creaking. But anyway, um, I want to talk about the spiritual aliveness that one can feel, you know, in exercise. I know it's the 
you know, your endomorphins are shooting off and you can feel really centered and everything. And I know that's true with yoga. Maybe you could answer the question first from your perspective. Well, I, I do know that, you know, especially when, you know, the number one, uh, you know, biggest contributor to illnesses is, is stress. You get stressed out and then stress leads to headaches and it can lead to back mm -hmm. aches and then just your overall attitude when you're overstressed and to have can lead to cancer, right. ulcers, I all mean, kinds of all things, kinds of things, heart and, disease. And the fact that, you, you know, I mean, just know what you feel like when you go for a walk, when you just get away and mm -hmm. go outside and walk. Well, when you have structured exercise in your life, long term is always going to be, uh, it's always going to affect your health. Um, Initially, sometimes you get out there and you're like, oh, I don't want to do this. I don't feel like running. I don't feel like getting on that treadmill. And then once you're there, once you're done with that exercise, you, you can't tell me that you don't feel 10 times better than before you got there. I feel serenity. That's right. the spiritual payoff and, for me. And, you know, we're in there sweating and huffing and puffing and see that when we stay in there, we're, we can see the yoga people on the other side and and they're doing a whole different type of workout but the benefit for the both of us is the same we feel better uh, we release some stress um, we burned off some calories uh, I always say calories in calories out especially around the holidays now we're going to be putting in some calories and um, more in touch with your body right right and and the fact that that exercise is our avenue. It always should be um, a part of our lifestyle, whether you make it, um, you know, during the day or in the mornings or afternoons, make it a part of your day. Mm -hmm. um, people often ask me, well, Annette, how many days a week should I exercise? And I say, well, let's see. How many days a week do you get up? <laughs> Uh, and they, you know, they don't really want to hear that. They want to hear the, well, how about just three days a week, <laughs> yeah. you know? How about... Ten minutes a day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, you know, make it, do something called exercise, I say, every day. If you're going to eat every day, if you're going to get up, it's like celebrating your health. What a perfect way to celebrate your good health mm -hmm. is to get up and exercise. And I've heard you say too before, Ned, I have heard you say to people, I do it because I can. I can. Yeah, we I just did that. On, on you know, we, <laughs> we were, we, he knows it's, uh, you know, that one floor up from our office. And I said, Jimmy, we're not taking the elevator. We are taking <laughs> the stairs. And you know why? Because as we can. can. Yeah, yeah, as we can. Okay, very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Your spiritual analysis or your... She, she said it. I, I you agree know. with that? Absolutely. Uh, I don't think I could add anything to it. You know, it, it's just a, it's a different form. You know, you, you get it. It's a meditative uh, form. It, we, we like to say in yoga, we, you develop the posture. It's not about the calisthenics of it, about getting the pose, but it's manifesting it as an object of meditation. Then, in other words, you become serene within the stress of trying to hold or do attain the posture. So in other words, you're working, it bleeds, mm -hmm. it should bleed out into your life so that when you do get stressed and the bad times come and the bad news comes, you're already becoming self-observant of it because of your yogic practice. Mm -hmm. So it's something that it's not just, okay, I'm going to do yoga today for a half hour and then forget about it. It stays with you. It's the longer you practice, you mature and it lingers with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you begin to be able to handle stress or not get so upset. That is something I hear all the time. Because people, you know, it's wonderful. People send me cards or they come up to me and give me a gift after a, their year or second year anniversary. It's become like a tradition among some of the students. They hear, I just want to, you know, I appreciate so much. That's the grand thing. Because you don't make any yo money in the yoga business. There's no doubt about it. It's that number. <laughs> but, you know, it's just, and that's because they feel what it's done for them. You know, the gratification of that, that feeling. It can change your life. It does. Yeah, it's transforming indeed. Yeah transforming indeed indeed <laughs> why don't you talk about some of the some of the poses that you do All and right. describe them well I think for the audience sake those those who would like to start a practice and I guess we'll be showing these or they're, they're being shown now as I speak mm -hmm. um, the Sun salutations which which consist of nine classical poses 
So what happened approximately 1,500 years ago, the sage Vamana Rishi, you know, they would take corpses out into the forest, cut them open, and, and see how they work. You know, there were no taboos against that there then, anyway. I mean, at different periods, the, the rules change, of course. But um, the Vamana Rishi uh, went ahead and devised this system of yoga where he took already existing very old postures, very old 1,500 years ago, and put them in a sequence. And each, again, each posture will evolve into the next. With so the dead body? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Put the pose in a, to a sequence, and so that each posture will evolve into the next. So it's a sequence. So in the Ashtanga, we always teach it the same way. The system is the same. You always get the same group of postures in a sequence. So in the primary series, there are 72 poses, and we begin with the sun salutation, and they are nine postures held together through what is called Vinyasa. Vinyasa means moving with uh, coordinated breath or synchronized movements with breath. So it becomes a meditative flow. Mm -hmm. So while you're m moving and exercising, you're practicing the discipline of meditation simultaneously. So you create this meditative flow through these nine postures. And at the same time, it's very, very vigorous. It's going to take the spine, very important in yoga, internal organs in the spine. You need to tone them, stretch them, develop them, just as well as the outer muscles. Uh, so we start within, so you're going to stretch your abdominals, your organs of elimination are going to increase in their function, doing what they should do. And then the, um, there's a heat... Goodbye constipation. Goodbye is right. You know, <laughs> it's true, I get calls from... I had one, I've had a number of phone calls from beginning students. One of them was a... Uh, when it was the... It said, well, I teach at the World Gym now here downtown. But one of them was at... Um, before they bought it, it was the gold. No, gold, I teach at the Gold Gym, the executive branch mm -hmm. down here. Mm -hmm. You know, on on um, downtown Sports and Wellness. Yeah, on Gold Street. No, oh, it's gold the Gold Street. Street. Okay. Yeah, I teach there too. Down. But anyway, at Gold Street, and they had, and this, they just bought out uh, World Gym. So I was teaching at World Gym, and some of the aerobic instructors wanted to take the first class that I gave, and I got a call, and, and this after the class, and she, one of the aerobic instructors, and she was like panicking. You know, I'm my, I can't stop my bowels from moving. <laughs> and I said, you know, th that's a good thing. I think they need it. Sometimes the sacrum presses up against the large intestine. And in yoga, we do these spine lengthening poses. Because we sit in these style chairs and western toilet bowls, you know, our spine gets compressed. We jog, and it mm -hmm. presses up against the bowels. And we open it up, boy. And, and she was having a, and it was good for her. <laughs> 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 it is, it does. Yeah. And then you start to think about the kind of food that you're eating when you have internal body functions working properly, you know? Uh -huh. And they say, well, no, what do I want to eat that for? You know? I've gone organic. Oh, good for you. Yeah. Yeah. I know. No more hormones, no more pesticides, no more steroids, no more nothing. My meat, my milk, veggies, everything. I feel like a million bucks. I really do. And, and the flavors are amazing. Everything yeah. tastes so much better. Well, you know, and along that same line it's of the sun salutation, I've pretty much memorized those. The rest of the stuff, I still yeah, need some help. Sure. But um, in the hotel, traveling, you know, you, you get in those strange beds or too hard and wake up with a backache. Well, you don't have to, you know, if the weather's not good or you don't know the area, you're like afraid to go out for a little jog or run. I do the sun salutation. Stretch out my back. It feels so much better. Cool. Um, get the, the limbs ready and ready to, you know, where, if I'm going to a conference or just traveling. Um, sitting in a car all day, those of you who travel, you can That's pull That's what I've said about you. You don't walk. You float. You yeah. float. Okay, yeah. now we only have a couple of minutes left. Oh. So tell us really quickly some of the, so what some of the poses are, like really fast. And then we'll show the pictures really fast. Okay, ready? Go. Up dog, down dog. <laughs> Final twist. So in, in yoga, the, the yogis in India call the spine, the, the Hindus, the staff of Brahman. It's so important. So you're going to find stretching the spine upwards, downwards, compressing it, and also twisting it, spiraling it, so that those intervertebral pads will receive fluids. At the same time, while you're doing this, so it's not like, okay, today I'm going to work out my abs, and tomorrow I'm going to do my legs. In the, the pose itself, all the components come into all, all the muscle groups. They're all connected. So you use them all. Like I said earlier, from the roots of the mm -hmm. toe, stem of the brain. So what you're seeing, you can see the spine is arching, it's bending, the mm -hmm. legs are stretching, the, the kneecaps are lifting, the quads are engaged, the joints are releasing, the head is lower than the heart. This is an inversion, bringing oxygenated blood to the brain. If I join your class, will you pa be patient with me? I'm patient with all 
people. Okay. All, all students. <laughs> all right. People. Not all people. All students. Okay. If they're paying students. Of course. <laughs> pay, hey, right. I lose my patients with non paying numbers. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? We can do this again sometime, but we're out of time right now. But we can do this again. I hope you'll come back. I will. I hope you'll come back. I will. Thank you, Mr. Cardinelli. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Julia. Thank you, Ms. Ayala. And thank you, everybody, for joining us to talk about yoga. This is Dr. Julia Bain. Until next time, be happy and be well. This has been Employee Health Services, Mind, Body, and Spirit. For more information, call the City of Albuquerque's Employee Health Services at 768-4613. Let the Employee Health Services staff help you be your best at work, at home, and at play.